When you look at a painting, or any piece of art in general, what do you see? What is it to you? One of the reasons I kept my Twitter account for so long is because of the artist. I have a lot of respect for people who can draw, as uh, someone who can't draw. Sometimes art can be simple. Sometimes art is abstract, it doesn't really have a meaning, or it's something you're meant to extrapolate on your own. And sometimes a single picture can tell a story. Artists will sometimes use their art to convey their own stories. Something I try to do with pretty much all of my videos. I try to make them as personable as possible rather than just talking about the thing in question. Sometimes a work can teach you something about the person who made it. And that is pretty much the entire backbone of this game. Behind the frame the finest scenery. You play as an artist preparing her masterpiece for an art gallery submission. All the while, you eat eggs and toast, you prepare your resume, and sketch the old man outside the window over some coffee and cassette tape music. One of the fun things about these kinds of games is interacting with every single nook and cranny to get the most out of the environment, and maybe even learn something. This girl's got a degree that she ended up not making use of, and I can actually kind of relate to that to some extent. I have a bachelor's in computer science with a minor in digital art. I went down this route because I initially wanted to be a game designer. A uh, long story short, I'm pursuing other passions that I actually gained through my digital art minor. Editing stupid stuff and making people laugh or smile. Small details like these really make me feel immersed, or maybe I'm just projecting here, who knows. And then there's all the paintings around her apartment. You have these nice scenery paintings, and then the ones involving a man and a woman. You're immediately intrigued and want to learn more about the story these pictures are telling. You can tell they're supposed to be parallel with this girl and the old man outside the window, but you can't put your finger on it. And as you continue to observe the old man and his surroundings, you start to fill in some of the missing pieces, bringing you one step closer to revealing the secrets behind them, which translates to puzzle solving. And honestly, this kind of narrative really lends itself well to puzzle solving. Every puzzle reveals more secrets that will help you solve the other puzzles and go even deeper. You'll flip over to the old man's perspective once. Initially, he doesn't seem to notice the girl at all, but he does eventually glimpse over at her. You'll see a strong resemblance to some of the pieces in his room to the one in the girl's and each one of those has a story behind them too. Like the picture of the cat in the alley resembles a box in the girl's room, and you'll see a flashback of the two figures from those series of paintings involving that memory. Right after, you'll start to notice something is really off. You're repeating the same tasks over and over. Your boring ass cover letter keeps reverting back even though it clearly says you saved it when you completed it last time. As you reveal more and more secrets behind the paintings, you also get these letters from someone who goes by J. And later find out these are addressed to a girl named Amber. The resemblance between these two and these J and Amber people become more and more apparent. But the question is, how? How could they have met before? The old man is, well, clearly older than the girl you're playing as, and he's clearly nearing his end because you see that he's sick and hooked up to an IV. I initially thought, are we a ghost? Is this a time loop? In the middle of the night, the girl wakes up and sees the old man has fallen over. And then, suddenly, the entire room seems to fall over onto a wooden floor. This is where all the pieces really start to line up and the game really amps up the puzzle solving. This is literally a solo escape room. You're surrounded by a bunch of puzzles and you gotta figure out each one out 
one by one to reveal the solutions to the rest of them, so on and so forth. And now you finally start to see more of the things from Amber's side, and you start finding notes to Jay from her now. And when everything starts to click, you're sent off to the finest scenery. All of her memories come back to her, all the time she spent with that guy, that special feeling of having someone who shares the same interests. All of these things immortalized in the art that they created. It turns out her art was accepted and she went off to New York. In that moment, you finally recall his name, Jack. The view outside the window changes one last time, and when you look out, you see an art gallery where all of the old man's art is being appreciated by onlookers. Among the crowd, you see an old lady. The moment she looks at you, you finally know the truth. That woman is Amber, and the girl you're playing as is a painting, the spitting image of her when she and Jack would spend time together. It's time to focus on my art. I will paint the most beautiful sceneries. What do you say, Jack? This game shares some things in common with Studio Ghibli films. If you don't know Studio Ghibli, basically they made a bunch of popular anime films that made a lot of people's childhoods, and are still making films to this day. Firstly, there's the cutscenes, which really exude that Ghibli anime style vibe. Secondly, the game doesn't really have an antagonist. This is common in films such as My Neighbor Totoro that are intended for child audiences. Also, I'm just gonna say it right now. I think the relationship between Amber and Jack was meant to be platonic. There might have been some implied romantic feelings or at least there was enough room for them but it's never stated they ever got together at any point. When the game said Amber went off to New York, I just sort of assumed that they stopped hanging out before things could get serious. I'm pretty sure the people you see with her at the exhibit are supposed to be her husband, kids, and grandkids. And honestly, that's pretty cool in my book. A guy and a girl can be close without being romantically interested in each other. Or I could be totally wrong. I just hope none of them shippers start flooding the comments saying how they want to see them hold hands or something. Ugh. After seeing this ending and looking back at my footage, so many of the small details made more sense. Why the old man didn't notice her, why they have all the same pieces, the window face planting into the floor, and how it seemed like we were stuck in time doing the same things over and over. It was because we were a painting, meant to capture a specific moment in time. A time when Amber was just on the cusp of making it. And Jack would make his way too. It's only as I've gotten older that I've started to appreciate some of the media I've consumed in my life on more than a surface level. I think games like this are a good reminder that even something as simple as an image can convey something really meaningful, and this game literally shows that with every work of art, there's a story behind the frame. Don't 